Dear friends in scouting, this event has been prepared to be a positive and engaging experience of education and decision making for the future of world scouting. We want to make this event meaningful and enjoyable for you. To be as inclusive as possible, we offer all the plenary sessions in our official WISM languages, English and French. To do so, go to Session Information and click on the Interprefy button. You can then select the language in which you would like to follow for the plenary session. If you have any challenges, please reach out to our dedicated Help Desk team. On the platform's bottom right corner, you will see the Help icon. Here, you can get access and connect with the support team. Delegates are entitled to ask their questions related to the plenary discussions using the live Q&A section. We will do our best to address all your questions either through written responses or directly on stage. You can also use the discussion forum to interact with other participants, speakers, and chairpersons. All participants will be muted during the plenary. If you wish to intervene, raise your hand to talk and our production team will bring you to the stage. You will need to accept our invitation to join the green room where our team will test your microphone. And when you're invited to the green room, we also encourage you to turn on your camera to get to know you and best represent the diversity of our movement. Abusive behavior of any kind that leads to harm prejudice, discrimination, or harassment against any person will not be tolerated during the World Scout Youth Forum. We have safe from harm procedures in place to make sure everyone feels safe and welcomed during this event. If you need any further information, please check scoutconference.org slash safe from harm. If you feel unsafe at any moment while participating in the World Scout Youth Forum, Please share your concerns by emailing safeforum at scout.org or reach out to a listening ear available at the events. To keep you well informed throughout the forum, you will find the agenda and links to different sessions on the events participation platform. We will also use the official World Scout Youth Forum website as a communication channel. This plenary session is being streamed live on YouTube and Facebook and will be made available on the platform afterwards for you to see. Let's start our plenary session by welcoming our chairpersons. Enjoy your World Scout Youth Forum. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the third day of the first ever World Scout Youth Forum. I hope you had an exciting day yesterday and that you have started to have a lot of friends with you around the world. Remember, you can always reach out for support to ask questions at the help desk by using the blue help button on the bottom right hand corner. Please remember to answer the entry survey of the forum, which is now posted on the chat for you. Now it is time to start our day with an inspiring, inspiring message from our Wusum youth representatives. Let's have a look. We as young people should advocate for the causes we believe in. More than 40% of the population of the world is made of people under the age of 25. As a generation, we have such a fiery passion for the issues that are relevant today. Our generation has more access to information than ever before. We understand well some of the challenges that are in the community, what the community needs. As youth, we have to advocate for issues that matters for us, because no one will do it on our behalf. When it comes to youth matters, there is no other better source than the youth themselves. Advocating for the things that matter the most to us is not only an option, but a responsibility. We are the present and future. We need to raise our voice. All we need is the voice of the young people to be heard. We as young people have to get involved with the decision-making process because it's going to impact our life and the world we live in. If we speak together, our voice will be heard. Our ability to express and to discuss and to influence some of the global conversation around these issues today is a core part of our being an active citizen and a core part of us being scouts. Doesn't this video say it all? A huge thank you to, two, uh, to all our youth representatives who have been working with Wisdom's Voice in the past two years. We're here today in the largest youth forum and we have the power to make our voice be heard 
to be involved in decision making for our beloved movement, to bring changes to our communities and in this large scale to the entire world. Dialogues, discussions and influence are a core part that being active citizens and scouts. Let's raise our voice, let's be scouts. As usual, Jesper is now with us again and we'll look at the drawing summarizing how the day went yesterday. Recapping on yesterday events is always the best part of it. Let's see.
Thank you so much, Jasper. We had the pleasure of hosting the first ever Time Kiss of the Year, Gentle Jolly Round. We got inspired as to how to be observant and innovative in order to address some of the society's most pressing challenges nowadays. And we also get opportunities to meet scouts around the world that are implementing projects and policies locally to advance the sustainable development goals outside the plenary. After that, we got to know the Youth Advisors candidate, and at the end of the day, we'll discuss the draft wisdom triennial plan. Please note that you can still contribute to the triennial plan reflection in the padlets that we have shared with you yesterday. Before we move on, we have a warm reminder from Carla. Carla, can you share with us? Sure, Maury. We are excited to see that there has been many fruitful discussions carrying out by the international teams. There has been a lot of sharing of ideas and information, and whether these discussions take place on the platform or elsewhere, you would be voluntarily sharing your ideas and information. When it comes to personal information, the forum does not require anyone to provide their personal data, such as telephone numbers, emails, etc. Chat groups on social media platforms other than the Youth Forum platform can help to facilitate communications and discussions. While communications on the Youth Forum platform is being monitored, Please note that we are not able to monitor outside social media platforms and it is not required to join them fully to fully participate in the youth forum. Be mindful what kind of data you will need to share to join them. And remember, safe from harm and the code of conduct still applies and must be adhered in these communications channels. Thank you so much, Carla. It was indeed a warm reminder for everyone to be cautious when using social medias and other communications channel. Enjoy the discussions. And coming back to the agenda, today we'll have ample opportunities to discuss the draft resolutions and the constitutional amendments to the World Scout Conference. Including a dialogue section with the current youth advisors, you will also discuss the draft forum declaration. Isn't that very exciting to all of you? I am very excited and I'm so looking forward to hear the discussions. But the most exciting part today is, we'll discover who are the newly elected youth advisors are very soon, but not now. Let's wait. Are you ready for the day? Let's get started. Diana, what is next? So as you said, Maury, we're going to start the day by taking a look at the draft resolutions and constitutional amendments. After introducing these uh, resolutions, we will have then a Q&A session with the youth advisors to understand more about these resolutions. So get yourself prepared with your questions. The following videos will summarize the proposed resolutions and will provide you with a brief introduction to them. Without any further delay, let's all watch the presentations that we have prepared for you. In Resolution 2021b, Wasm Registration Fee, the World Scout Committee proposes to continue the current Wasm Registration Fee system until the fiscal year 2023-2024 and authorizes the next World Scout Committee to continue the system if required until 2026-2027. The reasons why the World Scout Committee does not propose a change system for this triennium, even though this was previously proposed and promoted at regional conferences, is the uncertainties in the world. In the current situation, it is impossible for WASM to present member organizations with a calculated fee based on a new registration fee system based on data that reflects the current member organizations find themselves in. Therefore, the World Scout Committee proposes to continue the current WASM registration fee. We believe the proposal ensures stability and predictability for member organizations in the registration fee system for the coming years. The proposal also provides flexibility for the next World Scout Committee to adapt to the evolving economic and membership situation of the member organizations. The proposal assures a continued stable income stream to fund 
Wozen's operations at the same time as it imposes on Wozen to develop conservative budget plans, mirroring the financial economic reality faced by member organizations. In Annex 1 of Conference Doc 8, we have proved an overview of the registration fee per member organization. This is the same fee your member organization has paid every year since 2011. In Resolution 2021C, Strategy for Scouting, World Triennial Plan 2021-2024, the World Scout Committee proposed a conference to approve the draft objectives of the World Triennial Plan 2021-2024. This is the third iteration towards achieving Vision 2023, the current Strategy for Scouting approved by the World Scout Conference in 2014. Draft objectives are organized in line with the six strategic priorities of Vision 2023. A dedicated COVID-19 pandemic recovery and resilience objective is included in this triennial plan, aiming to provide national scale organizations with critical support at the various stage of their recovery from the pandemic. The proposal further requests the next World Scout Committee to do a final reality check of the approved draft objectives versus the available resources and align them with any other approved conference resolutions. As a final item, the draft resolution also requests the next World Scout Committee to develop the next strategy for scouting. Post Vision 2023, through a participative process engaging the scout movement and putting a final proposal for consideration at the conference in 2024. The World Scout Committee proposes a constitutional amendment to Article 5.5 of the Wozom Constitution to embed the safekeeping of all members in scouting as a fundamental membership requirement. The proposal reads, Policies and procedures to ensure a safe environment for children, young people, and adults in scouting. This proposal brings safe from harm compliance on par with other membership requirements, such as youth program, adult training, and fee payment. It would apply to all current and future member organizations. We propose this amendment to make strong stance against the abuse of young people and adults, and to urge all member organizations to take safe from harm as a matter of the highest priority. In Draft Resolutions 2021-D on Safe From Harm, the World Scout Committee proposed the World Scout Conference take the strong stance against the abuse of young people and adults through a declaration urging all national scout organizations to take Safe From Harm as a matter of highest priority. The proposal also requests the World Scout Bureau and the World Scout Committee to consider the implementation of the World Safe From Harm policy in all member organizations as a key priority. The resolution proposed this process is supported through strengthened, tailored support to help member organizations implement safe from harm in all areas of their operations, in particular education, governance, and communications. Third, the resolution proposed the creation and the development of a regular assessment mechanism to follow up on the implementation of safe from harm in member organizations and to explore an enforcement mechanism of compliance as of 2025. The resolution also requests WUSM to fully integrate Safe From Harm throughout all WUSM's operations and events. In Resolutions 2021E Youth Engagement, the World Scout Committee proposes a new movement-wide youth engagement strategy is developed in the next triennium. 
The proposal requires alignment between this new youth engagement strategy and the review of the World Youth Involvement Policy, as well as the development of the next strategy for scouting. Both processes are scheduled for the coming triennium 2021-2024. The proposal includes a set of main goals and objectives for the new youth engagement strategy, which can be found in conference document 10. These goals and objectives were created through focus groups that involve young people from different regions as well as the world and regional youth advisors. Based on the approval of these goals and objectives, a framework will be established to identify instruments and processes that need to be put in place to achieve these objectives. The framework will further ensure that all aspects of youth engagement are monitored, implemented and evaluated effectively. In Resolution 2021-F, the World Scout Committee proposed principles of a new event in 2024 that will transform the current formats of the World Scout Youth Forum and the World Scout Conference to evolve it into an enhanced and youth-empowering experience of the World Scout Conference. This proposal is a direct result of Resolution 2017-07, which requests the World Scout Committee to further develop the World Scout Conference and the World Scout Youth Forum. The proposal does not propose to change any of the current constitutional functions of the World Scout Conference, nor does it require any constitutional change. The proposal requests the World Scout Committee to guarantee sufficient mechanisms and space for effective and meaningful youth engagement and greater representation of young people in the planning, delivery and governance processes of the event. The proposal requests the World Scout Committee to monitor and evaluate the impact of the measures on expanding and protecting young people's space in the event. Resolution 2021-G, Youth Advisors to the World Scout Committee aims to further strengthen youth engagement at all levels, including at the World Scout Committee itself and its substructures. Based in the confidence on the Scout movement's readiness to improve and accelerate the progress on youth involvement in decision-making, the proposal further requests member organizations to recognize their critical responsibility towards youth involvement as they are the only entities able to nominate young people as candidates for world and regional committees as well as delegation members. The proposal requests the World Scout Committee to implement and strengthen a series of measures within walls and structures in the next triennium. These include removing structural barriers, hindering youth involvement in world scouting, involving young people in the operational framework and proposing amendments to the conference rules to strengthen diversity of the World Scout Committee candidates. The proposal also requests the World Scout Committee to strengthen support to members' organization in this area. This includes establishing and promoting a social contract for member organizations to commit themselves to nominate young people to regional and world committees, as well as supporting the delivery and training to young people in assuming leadership roles in national, regional and world structures. After all this work is done, we hope to be in a position at the end next triennium to discontinue the youth advisor system that was created as a transitional measure. In Draft Resolution 2021-H, Strengthening Wisdom's Environmental Sustainability, the World Scout Committee proposed to address the global climate crisis through coordinated action from scouting worldwide. This proposal is a direct result of Resolution 2017-10 to measure the impact and strengthen area of environmental sustainability at all levels. 
the proposal further requests the World Scout Committee to develop a climate impact strategy for WUSM, aiming towards ultimately achieving climate neutrality of WUSM's operations. It also proposed to strengthen internal practices and regulations by monitoring the environmental impact of World Scouting's operations. It requests the World Scout Committee to strengthen Scouting's educational offer in terms of environmental protection. The proposal also outlines a series of measures to strengthen environmental sustainability in existing frameworks and operations, such as GSET, World and Regional Event Guidelines and Delivery, SINT, as well as through global partnerships. In Draft Resolutions 2021-I proposed by Scouting Netherlands, the resolution encouraged our movement to have a closer look at how its events are organized. The World Scout Committee announced its desire to review and innovate all World Scout events on a wide range of issues. The resolution proposed to also look at the effects of the global pandemic. Our national scout organizations have already seen the devastating effects of this pandemic on scout events and it will affect events in the foreseeable future as well. The draft resolution asks for several measures to be explored. First and foremost, tools and guidance are needed on how to deal with the disruptive effects that the global crisis can have on event organization. Secondly, the World Scout Committee must look at the risks attached to being the host of a scout event and investigate what needs to be done to keep it attractive for NSOs to host such events. Lastly, the World Scout Committee should prepare scout events with the renewed global focus on public health in mind. All in all, the draft resolution aims in at creating magnificent events for scouts all over the world in the decades to come. In draft resolution 2021-J, the Guides and Scouts of Sweden propose a resolution on leadership in peace. The Scout movement is committed to a promise of peace. It brings people together to foster dialogue across cultures, religions, and generations. Through the educational methods, it enables young people to be leaders for peace in their communities, create positive impact, and build a better world. Peace is an ongoing process that requires constant efforts and attention to continuously improve Scouting's contribution the Scout Movement need to understand peace in the broader sense and enhance Scouting's role in building peaceful and inclusive societies. The United Nations Youth Peace and Security Agenda is essential in ensuring that the Scout Movement is not only connected to, but also stays relevant in the global conversation on peace. Thank you once again to the wonderful planning team of this youth forum. Without them, we wouldn't have that amazing uh, presentation of the draft resolutions. And thank you also to Jasper. So we hope that this introduction was enlightening and that it brought to you the most important topics and aspects that will be addressed during the World Scout Conference. Now, if you have any questions regarding these draft resolutions and constitutional amendments, it is time for you to ask the questions. We want you to engage in the discussions. Delegates, you will be able to raise your hands and, you, and we will be bring some of you to the screen. You should accept our request to come to the green room, but before entering the green room, you should be able to check first your cameras, microphones, and speakers. If you have a good connection, then we, you are asked to press OK button. We strongly recommend that you use a headset with a microphone. Please make sure that you speak clearly and slowly so that everyone can understand what you're saying. And make your intervention less than two minutes. Less than two minutes, please, so that we can, um, we can hear multiple speakers. You can now start raising your hands in the raise hand function. After two minutes, we will ask you to wrap up 
or invite you uh, to invite other speakers to make the interventions. When you have 30 seconds left, I will ring the bell to kindly remind you that you have 30 seconds left. We also encourage both delegates and observers to interact via the chat so that we can learn also from each other. Our team will be monitoring both platforms so that we can make sure that we can address all of the relevant uh, comments and questions that you might have also in the, uh, in the discussion to that, so that we can make this a fruitful and impactful discussion. I once again invite delegates so that you can start raising your hand in the platform. I have the confirmation that we have here today with us some youth advisors to the World Scout Committee that will help us respond to some of your questions. So you can now start raising your hands to ask questions about the draft resolutions and constitutional amendment. It is very important for us that we can engage in this discussion. We want you to take this opportunity to discuss, to ask questions and to learn more about the resolutions. I'm going to open the floor so you can start raising your hand if you have any questions. As you saw, we have plenty of resolutions with very important topics. Mori, I don't know what you think, but these have come from several uh, discussions, very fruitful discussions at the committee. We have come through several dialogue processes, and this is the result. But now it's time for you to engage and ask questions. So please raise your hand if you have any question, and I will invite you to join the green room so that you can ask your question. I see that we're now getting some delegates that are raising your hands. Please be patient with us as we need to check some technicalities before we are able to bring you on screen. I think I see Poland. The delegation of Poland wishes to speak, so I will invite Poland to join the green room. And as soon as I, I will invite them on stage. Now, if I get the confirmation, if I will let you know when you can start addressing the forum. Please be patient. As soon as we have you on stage, we'll let you know when you can start your intervention. Please remi remember to keep it short so that we can have multiple speakers. I just want to remind everyone that this is what we have actually just watched the youth representatives has shared with us. It is for us to raise a voice and it is for us to make an impact. And we are now here to discuss about the futures of scouting and everybody is really, really important that we really want to hear your voice and we can discuss and share the opinions. Thank you for that reminder. Amori, I see now the delegate of Poland. Yes. Hi. Hello. Now hey, you hello. can you can make your statement or question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first thing, it's really nice to be here with the, all of you today. I would like to ask if you have an uh, idea or maybe um, propositions how the new event should look like, because we are worried uh, about the, the voice of the young people after deleting, deleting the youth forum and the uh, youth advisors. Thank you, delegate of Poland, for your question. I will invite my colleague and friend, Julius Kramer, to come to stage so that he can answer this question. And while we wait for him, I would just say, I invite you all to read conference documents so that you can uh, get a clearer picture. Julius, are you ready? Please. Always prepared. Thank you so much, uh, Diana. Thank you, Krista, from, from Poland for, uh, um, for your question. Uh, so um, the new event uh, and, and what we're asking, what the World Scout Committee is asking the World Scout Conference to uh, vote for is the concept and the principles of the new event, which is outlined in Resolution 2021-F. And um, uh, those principles include suggestions for um, how to enhance the working methods, the program of the event, um, and uh, you'll be able to see in the resolution that there are quite 
um, uh, quite a number of, in the conference paper, there are quite a number of proposals for how to advance this. There's also a, a proposed um, a sample program. It's only a sample, of course, but which might help you get an understanding of what a program could look like under this uh, new event. And um, uh, to the concern of youth engagement, uh, the very reason, of course, uh, to, uh, why the World Scout Committee was asked in 2017 to look into evolving uh, at the World Scout Conference and merging it into one event with the World Scout Youth Forum is to enhance youth participation in decision making. And that is the, the very fundamental motivation behind this. And that will uh, is, um, improve the overall governance process. So I, 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 we have over the past number of years had a task force that's had uh, hundreds and hundreds of consultations with young people, with national scout organizations, and we've received good indication that this is indeed the right direction. And, and, and these consultations have then informed this proposal. And of course, we will continue engaging with young people in the design of this event. That is a key part of this proposal is that young people are involved in the design and planning of the event. So um, we, we certainly hope that uh, um, uh, that that comes through in the in the conference document and uh, uh, also keen to continue this conversation in the session later today and tomorrow on uh, the resolution 2021F. Diana, anything to add from your perspective? Thank you very much, Julius. Now, I think you cover it all very well. Um, I think it's important to highlight that not only this resolution, but all the other draft resolutions were consulted widely uh, with NSOs, but this especially with young people the last four years in different events that we have gathered together. Um, so yeah, I mean, just uh, the, cons the consultation comes to this last point where you uh, friends can discuss here in the, in the forum and, and say what, you, what your thoughts are. Now, I get confirmation. Thank you, Julius, and thank you to the delegate of Poland. Uh, now we have here with us a delegate from Libya. So please uh, ask your question, delegate, and make it short, up to two minutes. The floor is yours. Delegate of Libya, you may speak now. Oh. Hi, um, my name is uh, Ahmed uh, Pushiha. I'm, uh, I'm from Libya, and I would like to ask: uh, Does like um, as we know that there's some problems in um, in our in uh, most of the countries that how they like can improve the young, young uh, people involvement. So uh, does Yosem has some prop, uh, programs that can uh, like uh, support all the young people around uh, the world and all uh, NSOs? So yeah, thank you. Thank you, delegate of Libya. I think uh, if we get Martin here to talk about a bit the resolution on the youth engagement strategy, that could be helpful for you, hopefully. So just be patient a bit. We will have Martin Mayer, Youth Advisor to the World Scout Committee, here with us soon. That is indeed a very important topic. Not the only one that we should address, but youth engagement is certainly a very important topic that we as young people need to address. So I invite Martin. I know he's ready, so he'll be with us in a second so that he can share with us some inputs around the youth engagement resolution. Thanks, Martin. That was an excellent question from our uh, delegate from Libya. Uh, thank you very much for that, and I'm happy to speak to it. Um, obviously, um, you know, empowering young people to take on leadership roles is, is an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process, both for us um, on world level, but it's also an ongoing process on a regional level and an ongoing process on a national level. And I think what we are trying to do, or what the World Scout Committee discussed over the last couple of years, was that we as WASM really need to support our NSOs in, in that journey of empowering young people. And I think if you have a close look at the youth engagement strategy resolution, 
Um, we really hope that uh, you can find uh, bits and pieces in there, especially if you look, for example, at the last page where we kind of outlined the main goals uh, of the youth engagement strategy that we um, jointly put together uh, in consultations with young people all over the world that you can identify with those goals and that by us, you know, working on those goals that we can work with NSOs in Libya, with NSOs in Europe, um, that we can work jointly to advance um, to advance youth engagement. So I think that's really, I mean, it's a priority for us. It's one of the biggest priority for our movement. And by having this youth engagement strategy, um, I really think the aim there is really to address it on a national level so that we can, from a grassroots level upwards, uh, support NSOs uh, in their youth engagement journey. So thank you very much for that very important question. Thank you, Martin, for sharing those inputs with us. Absolutely, youth engagement is of the highest priority of the world level, but it should be also one of the highest priorities at the national and regional levels, and that's what the strategy is aiming to. Um, I invite you once again, delegates, if you wish to ask questions, that you can raise your hand and you will be invited then to join the green room. Before doing that, please check your mic, your cameras, and that everything is ready so that you can accept the invitation and join the green room. I see, I see some raised hands. Just be patient a bit. Just be patient, we'll sorting out the raised hands. So you remember you have to accept the invitation to join the green room. Also, if you have you know, some questions that you wish to pose by writing in the Q&A, you could also do so. But we're wishing that you can speak here live and address the whole World Scout Youth Forum. Mori, do you have any reflections around the importance of all these resolutions? I know there are a lot of them, but I think all of them are really important. Well, um, I just want to say in particular for youth engagement, like I, I think Martin made a very good remarks. But if you ask me in general, we should think about what scouts can do nationally and regionally, because scouting really, really happens at the national level. So as you mentioned correctly, I think the whole youth engagement strategy, not just cover like global level, like youth advisors, but then we also think about how do we empower more young people in national and in local level. And I think this is really key. Another thing uh, I think would be a key uh, would be sustainability. We always think about sustainability, environmental sustainability. And back in 2017, it's the first time there is resolutions where we bring up on environmental sustainability. And in the last four years, we are really trying very hard to push forward this agenda, to raise awareness, to build capacities on environmental sustainability, hoping the entire movement can we all walk towards sustainability a little bit more, a little bit higher. Uh, Obviously, the three youth engagement ones are really, really important. Like, there are three of them. Uh, but other than that, like, do you have any reflections on, like, youth engagement or safe from harm? Like, I do. I do have some reflections, but I'm also... I also hear that the delegate of India is ready. Ah, so nice. before sharing my reflections, I would like to invite to address the World Sky Youth Forum, the delegate of India, to ask a question around the resolutions. So hello, delegate. The floor is yours. Please keep it short. Hello. Uh, good evening from India. As uh, we all uh, just saw in the draft resolutions, that Safe from Harm will play a very important role in the upcoming years. So I just wanted to know and I just wanted to like hear about your views on how can we implement safe from harm at all levels and how can we ensure that safe from harm is accepted at all levels uh, in all the NSOs? What would be your views on that? Thank you, Delegate of India. I recognize your question, very important one. I will invite my colleague and friend Amal Riden so that she can join me here to elaborate on that um, question. I see she's ready. Just be patient a bit, and she will be with all of us here. Hi, Madam 
Chair. Hi, Diana. Hi, all. And thank you uh, for this uh, really important question and reflection on safe from harm. We all recognize that in our current times, this is a crucial um, criteria that we have to comply with and that it is equally important to other membership criteria uh, that we are uh, trying to maintain in WASM. So, um, in terms of things to take into consideration, and as you all witnessed in uh, our all world events, we're making sure to make uh, or have everyone trained and getting ready to all the safe from harm criteria. We also uh, encourage NSOs to refer to the WASM servers. So we have a lot of resources that would help the implementation of that. And uh, this is something that we as scouts should keep an eye on and that we should make sure that it is uh, fully endorsed in, in our NSOs. And the uh, draft resolution is uh, is uh, also outlining the support that we are uh, trying to give. So um, in our all uh, of our world events, to in order to uh, further strengthen the uh, safe from harm mechanisms. So it's actually uh, a common responsibility for all of us, and uh, we should uh, keep an eye on that on local events, uh, regional events, and world events like we're doing now. Thank you very much, Amal, for sharing those reflections with us. And thank you to the delegates of India. I now hear that the delegate of Oman is ready to ask a question also on the resolutions. So welcome, delegate of Oman. You have the floor. Please keep it up to two minutes. Yes. I wanted to add something. And uh, I'm having a concern regarding the two draft resolutions of uh, of uh, the youth advisors and creating a new event. What is the guarantees that we are having that NSOs will invite young people to participate or will uh, will uh, elect some people from their countries, from young people to be on the committees? Uh, I think we have to have um, uh, a special steps regarding this, and we need to make sure that the NSOs from all around the world will take the youth and the young people to the new event and to uh, take them for elections for the World Scout Committee as well. So what is the guarantees and the things that um, it's there regarding those draft resolutions? Thank you. Thank you, Delegate of Oman. I will invite for this question, I will invite my friend Martin so that he can help us address that question. I know he is ready and he will be shortly joining us on a stage to address your question, Delegate. Martin, the floor is yours. I'm happy to take that question. Um, so if I understood correctly, you were asking around how can we you know, ensure that uh, young people are participating as delegates um, in the World Scout events and how we can make sure that young people are at the heart of our decision making, both at the conference and at the youth forum. Um, and I think what we are doing uh, with the two resolutions that we have, and I think I've explained this earlier a little bit, is we have this youth engagement strategy, which is our bottom-up approach to ensure that young people can take on leadership positions and NSOs and in regional levels. And secondly, I think what we are having is the youth advisor resolution, where we are really focusing also on the world level on how we can advance young people in decision-making. And I think the key there is really that we see that the resolution notes the intention to discontinue the youth advisor system. And it's an intention of this current committee for the next committee to assess if we've actually made the progress that we envisage uh, in terms of youth engagement. If we see that we have not made that progress, and I think I can speak here on behalf of the whole World Scout Committee, the last thing that we want to do is make a step backwards in youth involvement. It is about moving forward together, moving forward on a world level and moving forward on a regional and national level. So we believe that by implementing the youth engagement strategy and by implementing the youth advisor resolution, we will make sure that young people are represented at the core of our decision making. Thank you for that. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Martin. Indeed, uh, we are aiming to progress on youth engagement and youth involvement. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Delegate of Oman. I now acknowledge the presence of the Delegate of Sri Lanka and then a Delegate of Portugal. 
I will take two, the two questions, first Sri Lanka and then Portugal. This will be the last questions because of time. These, however, are not the last opportunities for you to engage with youth advisors and also on the resolution topics. I see the delegate of Sri Lanka. Now I'll give you the floor for up to two minutes. Welcome. Thank you, Diana. Hi, everyone. So thank you for providing us such an inspirational uh, forum. So my question is, uh, will the number of members in the World Scout Committee increase in order to ensure minimum youth representation in the World Scout Committee if the resolution is approved by the conference? Uh, what is the ratio uh, of youth members that will be allowed in the World Scout Committee in that case? Thank you very much, Delegate of Sri Lanka. We will take that question first and then we will come back to the Delegate of Portugal. Uh, so for this one, I would like to invite my friend Julius to address the question of the Delegate of Sri Lanka. I see. I invite Julius to join me on stage to answer the question of the Delegate of Sri Lanka, please. I see that is ready. So please, Julius, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and, and, and thank you for uh, the good question, Delegate from Sri Lanka. Um, so I hear that you're asking um, what will be the um, minimum number of young people uh, on the World Scout Committee if this resolution on the youth advisor system is passed. And, and the truth is that there's no uh, minimum num number of young people, and there's no um, a maximum number either. I mean, um, what we uh, hope that this resolution and the uh, um, the proposals outlined in the resolution on incentivizing NSOs and, and uh, to uh, to nominate young people to the World Scout Com Committee, as well as the youth engagement strategy supporting more young people to uh, get into decision-making positions from the bottom up, that that will increase indeed the representation of young people and the number of candidates. Um, that are nominated to the World Scout Committee. Uh, but, uh, but the truth is that, I mean, there, there's no uh, minimum num number or no maximum number. The, the maximum number is, is uh, uh, you know, the number of voting members, which is uh, 12. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and of course, encouraging you to join the, uh, the discussion session dedicated to this resolution later today or tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Julius, for that uh, helpful information. And thank you also to the delegate of Sri Lanka for the question. I will now invite the delegate of Portugal. This will be the last question that we will take in this plenary again. However, this is not the last opportunity for you to engage. So delegate of Portugal, welcome. The floor is yours. Hello, uh, I'm talking about the draft about the uh, advisors too, because uh, in your uh, help the document you in the draft you say that the percentage of young people in the top decision making bodies of WASM has been increasing over the past two triennials however some regions are still not achieving the target of young people being present in conference and the executive committees okay. you say too that the majority of regions haven't set yet a system in place to promote young people as external representatives of scouting the target of having a minimum of 30 percentage of young people applying for positions on regional committees has not yet been achieved too. So despite conference participants under 26 years old have been increasing and the number of young people who attend the World Scout Conference without having attended the World Scout Youth Forum have been increasing too, is not the numbers that we want to aim and you didn't set the them so what gives you confidence to go forward with this if you haven't reached your own goals of youth empowerment what is your confidence because you set some goals of your triennium and you haven't reached that goals yet thank you thank you delegate of portugal for your question this will be addressed by my colleague and friend maury cheng please maury Thank you so much. Um, the delegations of Portugal really raise important questions, and this is why we need to come up with the youth engagement strategy. The youth engagement strategy is not focused on the global level, but also the regional and national level. And it is also a question for all of you here today. 
how are we going to move forward youth empowerment? It is also for you to raise your voice and it's also for you to take part in the decision making body at national level, regional level and global level. So I will urge every one of you here, besides the resolutions, also seize the opportunity to promise yourself to take part in the decision making process whenever you have the chance. So Deanna, back to you. Thank you, Maury, and thank you again once uh, for the great questions that you all posed. Thank you to the final delegate. Thank you, Portugal. Uh, thank you all for sharing your ideas and your thoughts. So this will carry on. The discussions are not over. You will have more time to raise your voice and to discuss some of these important topics in the sessions coming up today. To do so, please, right now, we will have a session where you will be asked to join your international teams. We would like to remind all of you to use the International Teams program document and the document number five so that you can join correctly your breakout room and that you know what are you supposed to do in those sessions. Please remember that it's super important that you attend these international team meetings. And for this, for knowing what international team meet you have, you will need to search in your email for the email that you receive with your international team. When you go to your international team session, you will see in the breakout options a room with your team number and one other team number, rather than a room only with your number. For example, rather than having a room for each team number one and team number two, you will be able to have a room for both team number one and team number two together. The team leads that you have chosen before then will become now the co-leads of that international team. In your guiding booklets of the Youth Forum, you will have to go to the session of today called Raise Your Voice, Resolutions and Constitutional Amendment. Once with your team, follow the guidance in the booklet. Do the exercise and answer as a team to the guiding questions that will help you guide your, your reflection and discussions. Remember that you can always reach out for support and ask questions in the help desk by using the blue button at the top, at the bottom right corner in the platform. To find your international team again, please go to the agenda of the Youth Forum platform and select your breakout room as we are seeing on the screen. Now it's time to break down into your international teams to start the discussions going. We'll see you back here in an hour to discover together who are our newly elected youth advisors to the World Scout Committee.